Bravo. Thank you, it's great to be here. Okay, so here you see an image of six human bodies. That's basically all there is in this photo. And yet by looking at these six human bodies, you can tell what's going on in the scene. You can make a story for what's happening and you'll probably be very accurate. And especially looking at the central figure, you might feel a sense of joy for the joy that she feels in this situation, a sense of empathy. We do that just by looking at this still photo of six human bodies. And the question is, how do we do that? Language is another symbolic representation that we all inherently understand, humans are very good at. Um, and I'll read this passage from Anais Nin Stella for you. She had the marvelous sensation of being part of a vaster world and moving with it because of moving in rhythm with another being. The joy of this was so intense that when she saw him approaching, she ran towards him wildly, joyously. Coming near him like a ballet dancer, she took a leap towards him, and he, frightened by her vehemence and fearing that she would crash against him, instinctively became absolutely rigid, and she felt herself embracing a statue, without hurt to her body, but with immeasurable hurt to her feelings. And so the question is, what does this kind of symbolic representation have to do with this one, if any, and how do we understand this from a neuroscience perspective? Well, the way that we've been studying this is by bringing people into the lab and putting them inside an fMRI scanner. And while they're in there, we can measure their brain activity when they're doing different kinds of tasks or looking at different kinds of videos or images. So we'll show them something like this, someone throwing a basket, into a hoop, and what we find is that when we look at their brains, they actually simulate doing this action as if they're doing it themselves. So they reach out their arm implicitly in their brain, they throw the ball in, and they actually have the tactile sensation of feeling someone brush against them, block their ball, and the disappointment of not getting their goal in. They do this all implicitly in the brain, um, and you, what we actually find is that they do this whether what they're watching a video, whether they're reading a passage about someone performing an action, like the one from Anais Nin that I read to you, or even if they just hear the sound of an action, like the swish of the basket going, in, the ball going into the basket. The other thing that we find is that people who score high on measures of empathy actually show more activity in this neural system. So this might seem implicit that you would map other people's bodies onto your own bodies in your brain if they're similar to you. But the question that we've been asking is how do you understand people who are not similar to you? So for example, if you were born without arms and legs, how do you map an action like this one when you don't have an arm to map it onto? And what we find, sorry, let me give you one more example. What about the case of people that you hate? Do you still implicitly map the actions of people that you hate onto your own body, or is that somehow repulsive to do so? And what we find is that even in these cases, when you don't have the body part, or when you hate the person that you're viewing, you still use your own body representations to understand other people. Though the degree to which you do this depends on your relationship with the person and the situation. And so now we're trying to use this knowledge to apply it to clinical cases of people who can no longer move their bodies that the way that they used to, for example, following stroke. And what we find is that even in these cases, we still see large activity in regions that control the body when they watch other people make actions. And so the idea is that maybe we can use this to prime these action regions in the brain to further make actions for rehabilitation. And so I want to end with the idea that our bodies are the frames that our brain uses to understand other people. Whether we do this by watching them, by interacting with them, or just reading a passage about them. And perhaps we can use this knowledge to help people who can no longer move their bodies the way that they used to so that they too may leap and bound lovingly into the arms of those they love. Thank you. Bravo, terrific, thanks.